In today's video traders, we're going to be talking about how to trade using significant or powerful support and resistance levels in the market, trading like the banks, looking on the higher time frames to find some really powerful zones uh, that may really cause some potential reversals or signs of longer term trend continuation. All of that and more in today's video. Let's dive into it right now. So how's it going traders? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick, also known as Trader Nick here on YouTube. I share all sorts of Forex content, analysis, tips, tricks, my own trading, as well as all sorts of other stuff about Forex trading. If you will, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below, support what we do around here. This is free content, hopefully to help traders along in their journey. Identifying support and resistance zones. Now this is a concept that a lot of people want to know a little bit more about, and there's a good reason for it. Um, there are some ways, at least, in my own trading, I really, really like to use support and resistance to trade supply and demand, right? A lot of times um, you'll see some people say that there's no such thing as support or resistance or supply and demand in the markets, right? Saying that there's no way it works and that it doesn't, you know, it's not effective. Um, what I would say though, is that when you're talking about a market, when you're talking about uh, a, a market of any sort, whether it's a market in person, like you go to the mall or you go to the farmer's market or whatever, anything, right? There is supply and demand whenever you're talking about about something that has a price tag on it, right? When we're talking about the Euro USD, there is indeed a price to pay if you want to go long or short on this, uh, this pair, right? If you're trading a stock, if you're trading Apple stock, well, there is supply and there is demand for that particular instrument. Now, when we're talking about Euro USD and we're looking to spot levels or zones of that significant support or resistance or supply and demand, we're trying to gauge significant levels where price may show some sign of reversal primarily, right? Another way of using support and resistance is trend continuation, uh, which we will get into in a second. But the first thing we need to do is we need to talk about how can we spot major levels of support and resistance in the market? How can we spot major structure points that institutions and the money that's actually driving the Forex market, how can we spot that? Well. To me, one of the best ways to do that is first of all, get away from the short term time frames, right? Because the one hour chart and the 15 minute chart and the 30 minute chart are great if you like to sh uh, trade short term. But if we're looking to trade like an institution, if we're looking to trade big levels of support and resistance in the market, we need to go to those higher time frames. And let me tell you why. Big banks and institutions have a lot of money to move around. And if they try and trade on the short term timeframes, I'm talking the 15 minute chart, 30 minute chart and one hour chart, there's not enough liquidity there for them to really fill their positions longer term, right? So if they have a ton of money and they pump the money into a long position, right? Well, what's gonna happen? the market is going to shoot to the upside, right? And so if they're trading the short term and they put a bunch of money into a long position, well, suddenly the market rises really quickly and they don't get a good entry price. Why? Well, because they're pushing the market up. So they're trying to buy their own, you know, they're, they're fighting their own way to buy into this market, which gives them a worse entry price. As opposed to if they buy in bits and pieces on the daily chart and the four hour chart and the weekly chart, longer term, they can get better entries that will fit their criteria. So they're going to be trading these higher time frames, which makes sense because again, they have so much money to move in and out of the market. We're talking about millions and even billions of dollars pushing around in the currency market by these big banks, institutions, hedge funds, all that sort of stuff. So how can we actually spot these zones? Again, the first thing we need to do is back out to something like the daily chart. The daily chart is one of my favorite charts. Actually, it is my favorite chart for looking at the markets in terms of technical analysis. The daily chart gives you a lot of clean pictures. Look at how clean the price action here on Euro to USD has been recently. We came up to this level, which is going to be our first zone that I'm going to point out, which is going to be a nice little clean double top. Look how clean this price action was. We saw a clean market move to the upside. We found resistance or supply, and we saw the market push back down, right? It doesn't get any simpler than that. We saw a very strong rejection there. Price came back up into that area. We saw a secondary supply zone and we saw this market rally further to the downside. Okay, so that tells me on this chart that this area right here is in fact 
a supply zone for sellers for the time being. Now that can change in the future and that's where people will say it's not reliable. It's because uh, supply and demand is always changing in the markets. But remember that a support zone is not by itself going to tell you exactly where the market is going to turn. Um, but it can be used as a tool in combination with other things to look for trading opportunities. So let's go on with that concept a little bit more. Um, how did I spot this zone? Well, very simply, when I'm looking here on the daily chart, this point sticks out to me. And if it sticks out to me, then it likely sticks out to a lot of other people, right? Because a lot of people are going to be seeing this area as a major double top. It's a very clear picture there that we had seller rejection and price push down. So that tells me that going forward, this level is going to be a potential level of supply. Well, let's also take a look at the recent low here. And let me show you guys this. So we have to take into consideration the long-term trend when talking about major market movement, right? Because when we're talking about those big market players, banks, institutions, pension funds, hedge funds, all of that, right? They are looking to draw, uh, to a lot of times ride long-term strong trends. Um, and so we've had this downward market here on the Euro USD. However, let's take a look at this recent low that we've taken a look at on Euro USD. This is something that I've been mentioning on our live streams that we do uh, here on the channel. We've been talking about the fact that EURUSD has been holding this recent low very well. In fact, take a look at the demand zone down here that we have in green demand for in the green here. You can see that price came down to this area once, twice, three times. And when it held that third time, not only did it hold or bounce back up, we saw a clear push to the upside um, and demand was in play in this particular market. So where do we go from here? Now that we have those major two zones, um, to me, there is other things that you can take into consideration. For example, the long-term trend. If we pop on our 200-day SMA, this is an indicator that I will use personally to take a look at longer-term trend direction, right? And you can see that we are still in a seller's market. We are trading underneath that 200 day SMA price on Euro USD has been bearish for over a year now we've seen some very bearish price action on Euro USD so taking into account those those reasons right this gives me a very kind of uh, bearish sentiment if price can come up into an area like this right and the reasoning behind that is again you have something like the 200 day right we're combining multiple factors here and we also have this supply zone now could I be wrong about this absolutely right? There's no such thing, no matter how good you are uh, or you think you are at technical analysis, the market sometimes is not going to respect those things. This may be because we have a fundamental change or shift in the market, right? This may be, for example, let's say the US dollar goes down quite a bit. Well, that would cause Euro USD to move up, right? Because Euro would be going up, the dollar would be going down. You know, th something like that can really throw this off. But for the most part, um, what we're trying to do here is simply using technical analysis, looking left on the chart, identifying major structure zones. And again, looking at those higher time frames, the daily chart here in this scenario gave us some pretty clean demand zone down here, right? And supply zone down here. So that gives us a start. Then you can do things like for example, you can start taking a look at other levels. Um, this one in particular looks really good. The current one that we are testing right now, this to me is a very clear level or a strong, powerful level right here, right? And I'll show you why. Because if we take a look left, look how many times the market bounced off of this level. One, two, three, I guess you could say, four, right? We had multiple times where price respected it. Price breaks through cleanly here to the upside. That was a bullish sentiment. So when price pulled back, we caught a nice little bounce there. But then when we formed the double top here, we had rejection underneath that 200 day, remember, and price broke down and now we are currently retesting it. So my my sentiment here would be that this is a significant longer term level and then we could see the continuation of this downtrend pattern um, under that 200 day powerful resistance points and coming into a level of supply. Okay, so this is kind of using the daily chart to identify major zones of interest in the market. We know that there's big money going into this market in order to turn this market like this, right? Think about the amount of buying that we're having to see to stop your Euro USD from going down and how much selling we had to see in order to push it from these highs, right? A lot of money poured into this market to sell this thing down. Um, and so that tells us 
that someone, whoever it is, right, had a sell bias or a sell interest at Euro USD at these prices. This is understanding the concepts of supply and demand in markets. And to me, using that daily chart gives me a very clean picture of potential levels of interest to look going forward.